Okay, we're live now, so we can oh, start wow. anytime. Yep. All right. <clears throat> okay. So, um, I think a lot about the process, my process, the process, uh, having to do with painting. I'm a painter. So, um, that goes back, I think, to way back when I started painting 50 years ago, where um, there were two modernism or contemporary art, of course, was mostly abstract or expressionistic, abstract expressionistic, abstract expressionist. Um, so there was always a conflict there between uh, depicting images and how they were depicted. And is the end result a evidence of the process, or is the end result simply your intent where the process wasn't particularly important, right? So you have the process, art that had to do with process, and art that didn't have anything to do with process. So um, let's say a, um, a simple illustration done for an ad. No one cares about the process there. And it might be a painting illustration of a person with a coffee pot. Nobody cares how it was painted. Nobody cares that the image may retain some evidence of how it was made. But contemporary art then was very much concerned with process. Um, and that is Still true, but not to as much extent. Now, however, that's always been a concern. It's like, so I'm painting on a painting, and every time I start painting, it's like I'm starting over. I'm learning how to paint. And it used to drive me crazy, but now I realize this is what I do. <laughs> so it's like, I started painting, it's like, how am I going to paint this? And I get into it, and I said, I don't know how to paint this. And it's literally like I'm learning how to paint every damn time. So I'm always conflicted about that because it's like, well, am I interested in process? Is the end result have, supposed to have something to do with process and what's often known as the mark? Or is it not important? Is it what I want to do? Is it important to me? Then go for it. Okay. So. I, I, for a long time, I was doing paintings that I very, in very general terms called nature paintings. And a lot of them were looking up into trees. And that gave a basis of an image, a recognizable image, trees. And a lot of opportunity to work with color, value, mark, uh, evidence of the expression. And um, people liked them. I sold them. I um, enjoy doing it. And uh, a couple years ago, I decided, all right, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm only going to be doing figurative work, which I have done off and on. But that's all I'm going to do. Nothing but figurative work. Of course, that's not exactly what I did, but that was my intent. So I started doing this series, uh, this model. Name is Lydia. A very unusual physique and uh, uh, look to her, which neither here nor there is part of my uh, intent, but uh, an interesting model. And doing things like wrapping her in this fabric. Well, these are posed as a working from photographs, not in life. Uh, I had some preconceived ideas on what I wanted to do posed to many, many photographs, like I do with all these um, hundreds. And she's wrapped in a piece of black fabric. And um, so that's my raw material. And I start painting it. 
So do I want this painting to be dead on, realistic, photorealistic? No, I'm not interested in that. Do I want it to be semi-abstract? I don't know what that means. So I go back and forth and I, and I work it through and I keep on changing it. Not at random, but I, I change, I do different things. Like I said, I'm always learning how to paint, right? So I'm, 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 I get somewhere and I say, oh, that, that color is not intense enough. I'm not pushing it enough. Let's try this. Let's try that. Let's try that. And it's not random, but it's experimenting. And I try not to be um, cautious at all. And I might get something like this, you know, we have this unusual combination down here, you know. Looking at it from a painterly perspective, it's very abstract, doing a lot of color and value. But that's not all it's about. And at some point, like I said before, this painting takes on a life of its own. And it's like I'm trying to discover what that life is. And it's frustrating, this midpoint, it's like the awkward age, I call it awkward age. I'll come home and I'll tell show. The painting's at the awkward age, I think I ruined it, you know? Uh, but at some point, I start to discover what that life is, what that painting wants to be. And then it starts crystallizing. And it's like, okay, now I kind of know what that is. How do I get there? And I might have a, a really cool pasture uh, uh, section, of, you know, something like this. Wow, oh, I really like that, you know? And I said, ah, I, gotta, I gotta cover it over. <laughs> <laughs> and at some point, I start eliminating things, taking detail out. I like with this, there was detail in this body. And I start reducing it, reducing it, reducing it, where it becomes really a black void. It's colored there, but it's just this deep void. And it's this black. I really like this. You know, you have this brilliance and you have this detail. And perceptually, uh, you recognize this as a face, you recognize it as a hand, so that draws your eye in. But that is only kind of supporting this very abstract, atmospheric uh, massing that to me is what becomes a, makes it a painting. Now it's a painting, it's a complete work of art. Um, and then going back to the mark process, evidential process, and so on and so forth, you see where, like in here, I'm leaving, this was intentional the drippiness of the paint. Um, not polishing the paint off. You know, it, well, this is polished, this is built up uh, many layers of paint. Here I'm leaving the uh, much more raw and it, uh, it's kind of counter, the counterpoint mm -hmm. to what's going on there. So, uh, And then when you're done, it, I always say I want the painting to have a life of its own. So when I'm done with it, I don't want to explain it anymore. I don't want, I don't want to make sure that you understand what I wanted it to do. If I have to explain it to you, there's nothing there. But on the other hand, what it means to you, if it means anything, doesn't have anything to do with me. So uh, I think that's another, in my mind, uh, for a piece of art to be successful, any piece of art, it has to have a life of its own. So it has to be open enough to allow people to see something in it. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, that's important. And then, the other thing is, it has to be honest. And it really annoys me, I shouldn't say annoys me, but it, it jumps out at me when I'm looking at someone's artwork and I realize that they're pandering to me somehow. It's like they're doing something 
because they think I'm going to like it, or that you're going to like it, or that you're going to like it. Okay, I suppose that has to happen to some extent. We're not going to make everything out of something ugly, it stinks, or something like that. But there, there's a difference there. There's an honesty where it kind of goes back to the artwork that's somewhat self-contained, where um, and we make fun of some artists that are very commercial. Uh, um, you know, I'm picking on that Leroy Dearman. Oh, him. A great mustache. Um, it's like, I don't know what people see in that, but they see something. So, all right, let's go on over here. <laughs> so, this painting here, same model. Um, and it's really very similar in a lot of ways. Um, It's a very different painting. Now, I didn't start out saying, all right, I'm going to do that painting. Now I'm going to do this painting. I didn't do that. But that's what I did. And when I was done, that's what I wanted to do. But I couldn't have told you ahead of time. That's what I wouldn't do. So that shows up. So then we'll expand on those uh, his thoughts about my process. I have to ask you, why did you do a second painting? Do you know why? I did many paintings. Uh, oh, you I did series. I did series, many of those. Well, what drove you to do that? If you felt that that was sufficient, and it was For that painting. Okay. But I want to paint. Okay, all right. I so that, know. you needed more than that painting, in other sure. words. That was not there were more ideas there. There were more. Okay, so that was not sufficient, but you had to explore mm -hmm. more. Sufficient isn't the right word. That's, that painting was done. That painting was done. Now, this is a different painting. Started with similar material and going in similar directions, but another painting. You do more and more sculpture. Well, it. I was just wondering whether you were exploring different impressions that you had of the model. It doesn't have anything to do with the model. It didn't? Okay. Uh, model, raw material to me. So these two paintings, again part of a series, there's other paintings, um, of, uh, subject who's here in this room. Um, <clears throat> these evolved a great deal over three years. Going back to the mark making, the abstraction, what the painting is and whatnot, uh, maybe more so with this painting. This started out very, very, very different painting. Um, it had a lot of paint on it one time. I scraped it all down. Um, it went this way, it went that way. It had very, very strong contrast. Uh, very, very, very different painting. What persisted was this pattern. The face pretty much stayed the same. The background drawing was the same, but very high contrast. So I was looking at this one day and I was frustrated with it because I went from liking it a lot um, to being really, really dissatisfied with it. And I looked at it, and looked at it, and looked at it, did some drawings, did some studies, and was questioning, or what's this painting about? And of course, it's not, it's not at all about Cheryl. Uh, it's raw material. Um, and then you look at what's the painting about as a painting, the subject within itself. Um, which is very much what abstraction is about. So this is applying a lot of the abstract thinking, not abstract thinking, but thinking about abstract art uh, to figurative art. Nothing new about that, but that's what I'm doing. <clears throat> so in many of these paintings, like, like I already said, 
I, I do a lot of reduction. I'll, like, I'll paint things out, reduce the detail, um, remove things that aren't uh, essential. So I started doing this, and um, I think first I took the figure and uh, put this gray down blue on it. And there was still a lot of uh, contrast in the background. Actually, a fence back here, some railings. There was a, a lot of diagonal stuff going on with grass. There's a lot of deep, intense color there. Um, and it's like, it's not doing anything. It's not telling the story. It's not a literal story. Forgive me. Not a literal story. But it's not telling the story. It's not doing anything to the painting. Interesting. I guess the uh, successful painting and stuff. So I started taking that out. And more and more blanking things out with this very similar uh, grade down blue and uh, so on and so forth. And the more I did it, uh, the more I realized from when I first started, it was all about this backlit uh, face. And um, when I finally got there, then it, it, a light goes on, almost. Like, it's like, okay, this is where I was going. I just didn't know how to get there. Now, could I have told you I wanted to look like this when I started it, two or three years before? <laughs> but when I got there, I knew I was there. Um, this went through a similar process. I was painting these at the same time. I have a big, big, uh, easel set up where I can put many things in. Um, this also had uh, quite a bit of detail and some delineation of space on it. And that. So um, ultimately, I painted this out and you know was able to bring this color over and. Very, very different things, but um, again, when it came, when it was done, I, I knew it was done. So, um, this is another uh, model. Um, who um, has posed for me in the past? These are professional models, by the way, um, for white headed. I hire them for doing this, uh, doing something, and um, there's an element in that where you get a detachment, where I say the model is raw material. I don't mean to sound crude, but um, that's how I look at it. It's just, it's just an image to work with. And uh, somewhere along the line, it takes on a life of its own. So, <clears throat> um, one reason I like uh, Karen is that she has kind of a tragic look to her. Um, you know Karen, right? Okay. Uh, and this is a series of nudes, actually. Um, where she's not completely new here, but this is a series of news. So this is kind of extend, expanding on the, what I was doing there. Uh, all three of these paintings went through a lot of evolution. Um, these are actually over, um, I think all three of them are, over another series of paintings that I decided I didn't like. So, <laughs> Uh, and you can see them underneath here. <laughs> so, this floral pattern is actually the old painting coming through. It's black. Uh, and that was so kind of, I don't think it's coming through. Okay. It was just broken. Why don't you just throw them away? Hmm? You just want to save the canvas? No. No, I wanted to paint over the old painting. If I wanted a new canvas, I'd use a new canvas. 
So I was, it didn't have anything to do with saving the old uh, material. I wanted the paint over that painting. And um, I wanted it to come through. So this was that series that was at Cheryl's a couple years ago. And I decided I didn't like it. So, uh, so um, I think these paintings, or these two paintings, are more about the model than any of these others are. Um, so the model is somewhat expressed here. Like I said, she has kind of a tragical tour, and I think that influences us a little bit. Um, and they all evolved a lot. This one evolved probably more than any of them. Uh, it was very, very different. So. But what I liked about most was the, the hand. So the hand was kind of like suspended in the painting there for a long time. And everything else changed. It was blocked out, it was scraped out, but the hand was so <laughs> <laughs> So then uh, these, um, this is all the same model. Um, and when I was uh, photographing her, probably had 500 images. And I knew uh, I was going back to some ideas I worked on a long time ago, 10, 12 years ago, with these multiple figures. So when I was, when I was doing the uh, modeling session, I knew I wanted to do something like this. Uh, and it's something I'm continuing to work on. So I really love the uh, Quattrocento paintings, the early Renaissance, late medieval. Um, Giotto and uh, Bella Francesco. Um, and um, then later, the like Botticelli. So, what they were doing when you look at these, these sometimes enormous paintings, frescoes, or paintings on canvas, they were very, very large, multiple figures. And they used a, a uh, technique to unify it and make that big space work. And that is used a lot, all the way up to uh, like Thomas Hart Benton and the muralists from the 30s, which went into uh, like Jackson Pollock's work and the field paintings, whatnot. So what's going on here is that when your eye comes in here, your, your mind will immediately identify a face. So as abstract as a face might be, or a cartoonish image, happy face, um, a, a water spot on a wall, if it has any relation at all to two eyes and a nose and a mouth, your mind reads it as a face. So, and of course, there's a lot of reasons for that. Your mind wants to relate to people. So that has priority. So your eye comes in and it's like da, 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 da. Now you identify the hands. Da, 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 da. Now you identify the feet. Da, 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 da. So you have this rhythm, the horizontal banding, and of course things are really tied together with the red and the black and the straight out background. So it's rhythms. You have it, keep, it holds your eye in here, and you go around. It keeps you in the painting, and then eventually you start examining the detail, and the specifics of the face. Um, so I was doing a similar thing with this, a little bit. Uh, I took some risk here because I did two figures, and I think I said this last week. You have you have one, you have a couple, you have a few. So then you know everyone knows one is one, a couple is two, a few is that three, is it four, is it five? 
And I think that goes back to how you count abstractly. So a couple or two has a certain tension and it, it has a little bit more of a rigid visual meaning, I think. And three is kind of similar, but a little bit more flexible. And then you get more in three, then it starts taking on a different visual meaning. So in some senses, this becomes a risk because it's, it's a couple. So it's like bang, 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 bang. What's going on here? What's going on? What's the relationship? Um, so I played with this a lot. The figures were facing each other. They were both, you could see both faces. You could see blah, blah, blah. So, <clears throat> and so when I was painting it, I had a, I was just really unhappy with uh, where it was going. And I had a lighter background like those. And um, it was reading as if these were two massive red masses with a face floating over here, with the negative space competing with the positive space. And uh, couldn't get off that. So by going dark, having these values same, having this value merging into this value, really brought it together. But then the, the face was just kind of, um, it looks like it was pasted on. And your eye couldn't get off it. You know, I couldn't get off it. But then I liked the face, I didn't want to mess with it. So it was similar to this. And um, it's like one of these things I might spend eight hours in the studio and actually have a paintbrush in my hand for 15 minutes, an hour. And I was looking at it for a long, long time. And I mixed up some uh, magenta. And I covered almost the entire canvas with magenta. Including the space. So I basically a wash of magenta over the whole thing. Which of course is kind of cheating because it's automatically going to pull it together, right? And then I started removing it, bringing the red back out. And then I took a rag and I went. Nice I'm finding that I'm seeing some real fine white lines yeah. around sporadically. Tell me why you did those little fine lines. I white, do that. White I, lines. The I white. do that. I scratch it. Oh, it's scratched. Okay. Right. Those are scratches. All right. And I have, you know, a scribe. Is it to bring your eye to? Yeah, you know, it's like to bring an edge out, uh, to bring a highlight in. You know, on something like this, I might actually do some cross hatching with the scribe. Okay. And then, you know, on something like this, where without those little scratches there, uh, the hair goes back too far back by putting the scratch there, defines it, and brings okay. it forward a little bit. Like I'm seeing it at the, um, where the, right there where your finger is. And then on her knee, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I see these very fine lines, and I didn't know whether you wanted to bring your eye to that, or what is the reasoning that you made that area? Well, this generally up. brings it forward because it's very it sharp. This generally brings that area forward. Okay. Uh, because of the contract. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Pretty much everything, you know, you'll see scratches, and like you know here. I'm defining, that was too flat, mm -hmm. so it's like, you know, I'm drawing. Um, I, I, I do it all the time, so. Okay. It's hard to here. Any other questions? Yeah. Do you ever finish a painting and say how did that happen? And what? 
how did that happen or how, in other words, I will go through the process also determines where it might go. It's feeding back to me. But there are some times I come out of my shop and say, how did you do that? In other words, like I was a stranger in my own process yeah. and in my own world, yeah. making decisions mm -hmm. without the awareness of who I was, what yeah. I was doing. Right. Well, sometimes you know it's important to leave yourself open. I, I don't want to say accident, but you know it could be accident to some extent, but also. Um, lots of times I'll go back and uh, you know, look at something the next day and it's very, very different. Normally I don't like it, but it might be, well, wow, that's really working and I didn't know that it was working. On the other hand, when you don't like it, sometimes that means don't mess with it because you might not like it for a reason and that reason might be because you're uncomfortable with something and the uncomfortable, because you're uncomfortable with it, it might mean that it has some sort of meaning. So maybe you should leave it like that. Some awkward element or uh, something, um, you know. I can show you, I'm, I'm just painting right here. I, I mean, there's, some, there's a lot of really funny coloration in here. Uh, and Define funny. <laughs> to make you laugh. <laughs> uh, odd coloration. You have, uh, but it's, it's working because the, the color saturation, the chroma level, uh, even though it's a high chroma level, it's reading as a, as a shadow, so it's contributing to the form. But the, this mass, which is really awkward, um, which is actually this fabric wrapped around her shoulder and a knee. It's really hard to read it, form-wise. You don't know what it is. Um, but these two things, you need to block out the face, which kind of makes everything come together. You have no idea what those forms are. You don't read these, these forms. You can't really define what they're and we struggled with it, we were talking about it earlier. And then in the end I said, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna change it. I want it like that. Did I intend for it to be like that? No, because it did bother me. But there's something about it that it becomes actually part of it, what this pain is about, visually. And as awkward as that is, I can leave it. There's no awkwardness to it, and it's okay. Mm. Okay. Do we have any last questions, or if not, thank you so much, John. Thank you. And um, this show will be on. Hi, Shauna. This show Hi. will be on until August first, and then the artist will be in the gallery. Um, on August 1st, so if everyone's interest, please come by. Uh, we'll be here for qu any questions. Thank you, John. Thank you. Very nice. Well done. Very well.